Hey, welcome to another exciting episode of Algebra Class. Today it's lesson 33. We're going to be talking about what are the chances. Uh, determining probabilities for various things. And what is it today? Um, independent and dependent events. Oh, okay. All righty. So let's define our terms, shall we? I'll give you some examples of these as well. And you're going to put your thinking cap on today. Independent events. Well, that would be like where you're going to do two things like roll a dice and flip a coin. Or maybe you have two dice, okay? And um, what you care about is seeing what the possible results are. But it's independent if the result of one does not affect the result of the other. Got two uh two dice here let me get a uh, different dice two dice and uh if i roll this dice it is not going to affect at all what type of number can pop up with this dice my event so is rolling the blue dice and rolling the red dice okay it doesn't doesn't matter sometimes we think it does like if i roll a six i have a better chance of rolling another six it's like no no um dice have no memory like they like to say those would be independent events or the result of rolling a dice and flipping a coin are completely independent of each other one does not affect the other one um, a second type of event would be dependent events and we'll get an expression like without replacement or we're looking for something like the sum of two things so now if my event is the sum of the two dice well, then whatever I get on the blue dice is going to affect my total outcome at the end, right? It's not going to affect what happens on the red one, but the sum, the blue sum, the total sum depends on the blue sum and on the red sum. They are not dependent events. I roll them together, I get 5 plus 10 is 15. Uh, if this one was 10 and this one was 7, then my total sum would be something different. One thing depends on the other. Or, like I said up there, without replacement. So here, you can see that I've got two red, one black, two blue, one green, and one yellow dice. Okay? The chances of me reaching in there and pulling out a red is two out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two out of seven. Same with chances of pulling out a blue. So if I pull, I reach in there, I pull out a red, and then I put it back, my chances for reaching in and pulling out a red are exactly the same that they were before. That would be an independent event with replacement. But if I pull out a red, what were the chances? Two out of seven? Well, what are the chances now of pulling out a red? Well, it's only one out of six. Or if I had pulled out, a blue, for starters, what are my chances of getting red now? Two out of six. The odds changed because the second thing was dependent on what happened in the first one. Okay, does that make sense? So if I put the thing back in, I, I hit the reset button and the odds are the same. But if I keep it out, I've changed the odds significantly. Make it much less likely to pull out another red if I pull out one. First time I increase my odds of pulling out a red if I didn't pull out a red the first time. So we got two words here: simultaneous and rely. Simultaneous goes along with independent events. You can do them at the same time. You could do them one first and the next one next, and that doesn't matter. You could do them at the exact same time, and you'll get the same odds. Rely though tells me that one thing depends on another thing and uh, an order will matter and uh, what happens to one thing has a, um, a change in the probability of what happens overall now if we're going to write these things down uh, formally this is the way that we're going to we're going to write about probabilities p is for probability and then we're going to just label a, a specific event which we would have to describe or define as event A and B. You can actually have more events than that. The rule is the same. 
So maybe event A is rolling an odd number, and ro uh, uh, B is something else. Okay, rolling a rolling a seven or higher on on a multi number two. The probability of both those things occurring is going to be the probability of the first thing happening multiplied by the probability of the second thing happening. For instance, let's say that I'm going to roll I'm going to roll two dice. And I say, what's the probability of me getting an uh, an odd number on one and getting an even number on the other? Well, I can roll them separately because one answer does not affect the other answer. So A would be rolling an odd on the green, and B would be rolling an even on the blue. Probability of rolling an odd on the green, there's 12 sides. That would give me a six out of the 12 ways rolling would get me a probability there. And then rolling a even on the blue, same thing. There are 10 sides here, and five of those are what I'm looking for. So I want to find the total probability of, of those two things, of situation A and B together. I split it up, and I think, what's the probability of one, and what's the probability of the other, and I will get... Well, that's one half, and that's one half, isn't it? Probability of getting that situation is one fourth. One fourth. Now, um, if I was doing picking the things out of the back, let me do one that's dependent. See that we actually do follow the same rule. I want to pick a blue, right? I want to pick a blue. Probability of picking a blue is two half seven. But then the probability of picking another blue depends on what I get the first time. So let's do it first that um, I pick a, I, I go at, uh, for a blue and I get it. So now there are fewer blues left in there. And there are fewer total number of things picked in there too. So this is in the situation where I'm looking for the probability of picking a blue and I got a blue the first time. Probability of this becomes 2 out of 42, or 1 out of 21. It's not very, very good odds, right? Okay, now let's say that I, I go in there to pick a blue, but I, I don't. I get the red, and I hold on to the red, and I don't put it back in the bag. Now my chances are, of getting another one is 2 out of 6, because there's still 2 blue or red or whatever color I'm trying to get in there. Now we're looking at... 4 out of 42, or 4, 2 out of 21. The odds are actually twice as good of, of having that type of situation. Pulling out blue, not getting it, then on my second turn, or my chances of getting the blue, they're better. They're better. So we're still just going to use multiplication, but and we deal with them separately. We have to know, though, if it's with or without replacement uh, in order to, to simulate that, that specific thing. We can also do this in a couple of different ways visually as well. Let's take, uh, for instance, my situation might be flipping a coin and getting heads or tails. That's pretty easy to, to, uh, to demonstrate. So I might, I might put here like a, like a tree diagram where I'd say... You know, first flip and second flip. What are all the possibilities or how many possibilities are there? Well, on my first flip, I could get a head or a tail, right? And then because that the coin doesn't have a memory either, I can pick it up and flip it again. And what just happened does not matter, will not um, cause a different outcome when I flip it again. So my second flip, I, if I had a head, first, I could get a, another head or I could get a tail. If I did a tail first, I could get a head or a tail. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the paths from beginning to end. There's one path there, which would be heads, heads, and then the next path would be heads, tails, and then this path would be tails first and then heads, and then the fourth path would be tails and tails. There are four different paths there total. What's the probability of getting one head and one tail? Well, both of these both of these situations are that situation. So that's two out of the four 
different ways I could get two heads or one head and one tail. One out of four for two heads, one out of four for, for both tails. Maybe a, uh, another way to draw that would be to use a grid. And this is kind of like what you do in biology with, with genetics, with connect squares. You could put down here, here's uh, maybe coin one, and over here you got coin two, and you list the possibilities, heads or tails. And then you do just kind of like grid multiplication there, and you see what the possibilities are. Heads on coin one and heads on coin two is me this. Maybe I want to mark out that it's which one it is, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, we've got heads and tails. We've got uh, tails and heads and tails and tails. That way you can just list out all the possibilities and count up how many there are of each kind. There's two with one each, one with both heads, one with both tails. You can compute then the probability of these events, which in this case are independent events, flipping coin one and coin two. That gives you a couple of ways to look at it. I'm going to clear the board and let's talk about um, odds, right? Odds are important when you go, when you're going to play these kinds of games. Okay, you're going to hear about odds a lot when they talk about horse racing or about a fight, like boxing match or something like that. They'll say, what are the odds? Uh, they even on the sports page will put the odds for baseball games and all kinds of things for a favorable outcome for your team. Let's define this. An odd, odds are a ratio expressing the likelihood of an event. A ratio expressing the likelihood of an event. Usually stated as, as a, with a colon in between. Remember we just, we did ratios, proportions, and all that stuff before. You could do it as a, a like this. M to N. The odds are I got a three to one chance. But you have to define whether you're talking about odds for or odds against. Like, what are the odds that I will roll two sixes? Or what are the odds that I won't roll two sixes? So if we consider, we're going to use the letter M to represent favorable outcomes, things that I want, and uh, N being unfavorable outcomes, Odds for something will be M to N. And odds against something will be stated as N to M. So the first thing is the thing that you're listening for, the odds. So what are the odds that I that I roll a six? One to four, uh, one to six. If I that I'm gonna roll a six if I roll a dice. One to six. What are the odds against me rolling a six? Five. Five to one. Right? Five. Oh, wait. This would have been one to five, wouldn't it? This would be five to one. So you're not, I'm not considering the total number of things. I'm just saying how many ways is there to do it? How many ways is there to not do it? And then oftentimes you'll reduce that to a, to a fraction. So like, what are the odds of me rolling an odd number on a six-sided dice? One to one. Because the odds are three, four, and three against. So that can be reduced to one to one. What are the odds that I get a number uh, two or less? Well, there's two odds for me. There are four odds against. Odds for that would be two to four or one to two. Odds against would be four to two or two to one. Okay, does that make sense? Probably not. But we don't consider the total like we were looking at with the boys and girls problem in uh, the classroom at the end of that one lesson. We're going to state odds for or odds against. Okay, important to understand which thing you're saying when you're talking about odds. Horse racists will say things like three to two odds or, or a one in 15 chance. Uh, we use the words chance or odds or, or uh, probability kind of intermixed, but odds are a little bit different concept than, than those other ones. Be very careful about that. Yeah, that's that. I'm still going. Want to see me juggle? <laughs>